my dear learners a very warm welcome to all of you in this session we will discuss the sustainable development of natural resources sustainable development of natural resources strikes some questions in our mind like that what are natural resources why do we need to manage natural resources we will try to find out such questions in this session in your previous class you must have learnt about soil air and water all these are natural resources and how various components are cycled over and over again in nature you must also be aware of the pollution of these resources all your previous knowledge will be helpful in understanding the management of natural resources effectively india is a very diverse country with different geographical locations you must have visited the sand dunes in indian deserts like the state of rajasthan biodiversity rich areas in the western ghats densely forested areas in the northeast and giant slow laden mountains in the himalayas all these areas are very rich in natural resources and biodiversity of different types and some of the species are endemic to these regions only endemic means belonging to a particular region traditionally we indians are very much aligned towards nature worshiping nature and sharing the resources equitably is also written in many scriptures the famous phrase in sanskrit mentioned in maha upanishad atharva veda vasudev kutumbakam which means the entire earth is one family depicts the same living in harmony with nature is not new to us sustainable living has always been an integral part of india's tradition and culture it has been integrated with our long lasting traditions and practices customs art and craft festivals food beliefs rituals and folklore natural resources are resources that exist without any action of human kind this includes all valued characteristics such as commercial and industrial use aesthetic value scientific interest and cultural value on earth natural resources include sunlight atmosphere water land it includes all minerals along with all vegetation and animal life a natural resource may exist as a separate entity such as fresh water air as well as any living organism such as a fish or it may exist in an alternate form that must be processed to obtain the resource such as metal ores rare earth elements petroleum and most forms of energy there is much debate worldwide over natural resource allocations this is particularly true during periods of increasing scarcity and shortages this leads to depletion and over consumption of the resources on the basis of origin natural resources may be divided into two types biotic and abiotic biotic resources are obtained from the biosphere living and organic material such as forest and animals and the material that can be obtained from them fossil fuels such as coal and petroleum are also included in this category because they are formed from the decayed organic matter abiotic resources are those that come from non living and non organic material examples of abiotic resources include land fresh water air rare earth elements and heavy metals that include ores such as gold iron copper silver etc on the basis of recovery rate natural resources can be categorized as follows first are renewable resources renewable resources can be replenished naturally some of these resources like sunlight air 
wind, water, etc., are continuously available and their quantities are not noticeably affected by human conception. Though many renewable resources do not have such a rapid recovery rate, these resources are susceptible to depletion by overuse. Resources from a human use perspective are classified as renewable so long as the rate of replenishment recovery exceeds that of the rate of consumption. They replenish easily compared to non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources are they either form slowly or do not naturally form in the environment. Minerals are the most common resource included in this category. From the human perspective, resources are non-renewable when their rate of consumption exceeds the rate of replenishment or recovery. A good example of these fossil fuels which are in this category because their rate of formation is extremely slow, potentially millions of years, meaning they are considered non-renewable. Some resources naturally deplete in amount without human interference. The most notable of these being radioactive elements such as uranium, which naturally decay into heavy metals. Of these, the met metallic minerals can be reused by recycling them, but coal and petroleum cannot be recycled. Once they are completely used, they take millions of years to replenish. Now, let us discuss the management of natural resources. A system of controlling the use of natural resources in such a way as to avoid their wastage and to use them in the most effective way is called the management of natural resources. Why do we need to manage our natural resources? We need to manage our natural resources because of the following reasons. The resources of the earth are limited because of the rapid increase in human population. The demand for resources is increasing day by day. The proper management can ensure that the natural resources are used judicially so that they fulfill the needs of the present generation and also last for the generations to come. The proper management of natural resources takes into consideration long term perspective or view and prevents their exploitation to hit for short term gains. The proper management can ensure equitable distribution of natural resources so that all the people can benefit from the development of these resources. The proper management will take into consideration the damage caused to the environment during the extraction or use of the natural resources and find ways and means to minimize this damage. During the Vedic period, both productive as well as protective aspects of forest vegetation were emphasized. Agriculture emerged as a dominant e economic activity during the later Vedic period. This was the time when the concept of cultural landscape such as sacred forest and grooves, sacred corridors and a variety of ethnoforestry practices were evolved that continued to the post Vedic period. Besides a wide range of ethnoforestry practices were infused with the traditions, the customs and rituals and followed as a means for protection of nature and natural resources. But changing lifestyles and greed for personal interest, we are continuously exploiting these resources. Over exploitation of natural resources leads to various problems. And the one prominent problem is the pollution. Pollution of air, water, soil, these are often global level problems and we feel helpless to bring any change. There are also national and international organizations working towards protecting our environment. But still, the problem is growing day by day. Let us discuss the pollution. The case study is one of the longest and holy river of India, the Ganga. The Ganga Basin accounts for a little more than one-fourth, 
that is around 26.3 percent of the country's total geographical area and is the biggest river basin in India, covering the entire states of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Delhi and the parts of Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and the West Bengal. The Ganga Basin is bound in the north by the Himalayas and in the south by Vindhyas. The Ganga runs its course of over 2500 km from Gangotri in the Himalayas to Ganga Sagar in the Bay of Bengal. It is being turned into a drain by more than a hundred towns and cities in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal that pour their garbage and excreta into it. Largely untreated sewage is dumped into the Ganges every day. In addition, think of the pollution caused by other human activities like bathing, washing of clothes and immersion of ashes or unburnt corpses. And then industries contribute chemical influence to the Ganga's pollution load and the toxicity kills fish in large sections of the river. As per the data from Central Pollution Control Board from 2007 to 2011, the water quality of river Ganga is not suitable for drinking because the river Ganga is used as a sewage dump for more than 100 cities stretching across Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal. Dumping of untreated sewage, excreta and chemicals from industries increases the toxicity of water. This makes it inhabitable for the flora and fauna in the river system. The water is highly contaminated with coliform, which is a group of bacteria found in human intestine, whose presence in water indicates contamination by disease-causing microorganism. Then in 1985, Ganga Action Plan was launched to clean the river Ganga and to manage the quality of water. Namami Gange program is an integrated conservation mission approved as a flagship program by the Union Government in June 2014. It was launched to accomplish the twin objectives of effective abatement of pollution conservation and rejuvenation of river Ganga. The national mission for clean Ganga is the implementation wing set up in October 2016. In order to assess water quality of river Ganga, the Central Pollution Control Board has set up water quality monitoring stations on the main stem of the river Ganga in association with state pollution control boards of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal. The health of Ganga River has seen significant improvement since enforcement of the nationwide lockdown that has led to reduction in dumping of industrial waste into it. According to the real-time water monitoring data of the CPCB, out of the 36 monitoring units placed at various points of the Ganga River, the water quality around 27 points was suitable for bathing and propagation of wildlife and fisheries. So, my dear learners, the pollution caused in water bodies is purely the result of human activities and exploitation of the natural resources. The sustainable use and equitable sharing of resources helps in managing the judicious use of resources. We should try to follow the 5 hours rule to save the environment. These are refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose and recycle. Refuse means this is no, no to things people offer you that you don't need. Refuse to buy products that can harm you and your environment. Say no to single use plastic carry bags. Next is reduce. This means that you use less. You save electricity by switching off the unnecessary lights and pans. You save water by repairing the leaky taps. Do not waste food. 
can you think of other things that you can reduce the usage of next is reuse this is actually even better than recycling because the process of recycling uses some energy in the reuse strategy you simply use things again and again instead of throwing away used envelopes you can reverse it and use it again the plastic bottles in which you buy various food items like jams pickles can be used for storing things in the kitchen what other items can you reuse my dear learners next is repurpose this means when a product can no longer be used for the original purpose think carefully and use it for some other useful purpose for example cracked crockery or cups with broken handles can be used to grow small plants as feeding vessels for birds next is recycle this means you collect waste you collect plastic paper glass and metal items and recycle these materials to make required things instead of synthesizing or extracting fresh plastic paper glass or metal in order to recycle we first need to segregate our waste so that the material that can be recycled is not dumped along with other waste does your village town city have a mechanism in place for recycling these materials even while making everyday choices we can make environment friendly decisions for doing this we need to know more about how our choices affect the environment these effect may be immediate or long term or long ranging the concept of sustainable development encourages forms of growth that meet current basic human needs while preserving the resource for the needs of future generations economic development is linked to environmental conservation thus sustainable development implies a change in all aspects of life it depends upon the willingness of the people to change their perceptions of the socio economic and environmental conditions around them and the readiness of each individual to alter their present use of natural resources so my dear learners the present day global concerns for sustainable development and conservation of natural resources are of recent origin as compared to the long tradition and culture of nature conservation in our country the principles of conservation and natural management were well established in prehistoric india our ancient literature is full of such examples where values and sensitivity of humans towards nature was glorified and the principle of sustainability was established at its best during the vedic period both productive as well as protective aspects of forest vegetation were emphasized agriculture emerged as a dominant economic activity during the later vedic period this was the time when the concept of cultural landscape such as sacred forest and groves sacred corridors and a variety of ethnoforestry practices were evolved that continued to the post vedic period besides a wide range of ethnoforestry practices were infused with the traditions customs and rituals and followed as a means of protection for nature and natural resources here some of the terms are used that may be new to you like sacred groups you must have seen and around your home especially in rural places where people worship their deity the place contains a patch of trees that they never cut but worship them these patch of trees harbors biodiversity and people do not disturb them such places are called sacred groves in the same way a very vast patch of forest which is sacred to the people and they perform rituals and worship their deity are sacred forest ethnoforestry is the branch of science 
or forestry that deals with the study of creation, conservation, management and utilization of forest resources by local communities through traditional practices and folk beliefs. The United Nations in 2015 set up the Sustainable Development that is Sustainable Development Goals SDGS or Global Goals to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. A total of 17 goals has been set up and all countries around the world have to implement the same. The 17 SDGs are no poverty, zero, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reducing inequality, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice and strong institution, partnership for the goals. So, my dear learners, in this session, we discussed sustainable development of natural resources and I hope that you will also infuse the value of 5 hours in your life and discuss the sustainable use of resources with your family and generate awareness among your friends. Also, I believe that you might be able to answer the following questions. First is, what changes can you make in your habits to become more environment friendly? Why do you think that there should be equitable distribution of resources? See you in the next session. Thank you.